So, uh, Adams by numbers, we're going to be talking about uh, what the different things are in the periodic table and how uh, how they developed. So, we should understand that atomic number is the number of protons, and that all atoms with the same number of protons are the same element. We should know that uh, atomic mass is an average mass of an element, and we should be able to look at the periodic table and interpret the symbols and numbers. So, um, you guys, why don't you take your periodic tables out? We just colored them, so take those out and look along with me. Yeah. Uh, because uh, just we're going to look through those as we go on. Um, periodic table designed by Mendeleev. He was the first guy. And two one. So uh, Mendeleev took the gr properties of an element and kind of just put them together like we did in our uh, uh, periodic table designing activity, which we did last class, where we took the cards and put them in order about how they were related. Uh, the families are were grouped by because the way they were alike. So in, uh, he grouped them together and actually predicted that elements existed before they were discovered. So if you guys look, this is Mendeleev's periodic table. It's a little different than ours, but there's a few things that are consistent. So if you guys look um, next to calcium, look at calcium. Calcium is in the second uh, column, the second family, the alkali earth metals. So... He knew that there was an uh, element calcium that had a mass of about 40. Uh, and he also knew that there was titanium, which had a mass of about 48. So, but he, what, in the periodic table, there was something that fit, should have fit in, in between here. He uh, predicted that there would be an element that's about the mass 44, but hasn't been discovered yet. And lo and behold, if you guys look at the periodic table, there's scandium. He predicted that scandium existed. It had a mass of about 44. He was a little off. It had a mass of 45. But it was pretty pretty impressive that, that he just, he predicted that the element would exist way before it was discovered. So, And he did that with a few, few different elements. So it's very interesting that he was able to do that. Notice, uh, notably, there's no noble gases. He didn't... There was no knowledge of noble gases. So... Uh, yes, Oscar? They didn't know, like, helium? They didn't know, and I'm going to talk about that in a couple minutes. Uh, so, mostly, he was a chemist, and he also fought in World War One. Yeah. And he was the guy who was accredited with putting them in number uh, uh, order of atomic number. So, essentially grouping them by the number of protons. And he uh, died very young in the Battle of Gallipoli in uh, World War One. You think he could have kept on, or, like... I, I think he would have. Uh, I think uh, he would have done a lot more work. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away. What if he passed on I don't know. Yes, we won't know since that. Gotta bring him back to church. So this is the modern periodic table, and we talked about this. We have our alkaline earth metals, which hydrogen really isn't part of, but hydrogen sometimes hydrogen has two families almost. Hydrogen, Rafi, keep your head up. Hydrogen has a family. Sometimes he's or, or he or she is part of the alkali metals, and sometimes he's part of the halogens. So you can kind of think of hydrogen to be part of both. Okay? Wait, what's the difference? Um, they're just different families. No, like, what's the difference between the families? Oh, they, they have different properties. They bond in different ratios. Remember how some of them were, like, we talked about, like, form, like, these ones all form uh, chlorides with one of each. One lithium, one chloride. Look up here. These guys form all ratios of two chlorides. So like LiCl, NaCl, KCl, etc. These form VeCl2, MgCl2, CaCl2, 